I remember one time when it was Mother's Day. So we went to church and all the mothers were asked to stand. And here I was sitting um, and mothers are being appreciated. And I am a married woman, almost married now, going for year number six. And there is nothing, there's no child. My name is Garabozwani. I was born and bred in the Val, south of uh, Gauteng, and I am the first daughter of uh, three. I grew up in a Christian home, and my parents were very strict. Um, so when we were in high school, we didn't uh, have much of a chance to uh, go out and um, be around boys. My father kept track on us. <laughs> so after matric, um, I went on to study. And um, about two years into studying at a tertiary institution, I met this guy at church. So we were in the youth um, department together. I was um, in the teenagers group. Um, in my late teens and he was in the young adults group so um, we didn't know each other and we happened to meet one day when he saw me writing um, using a pencil that had Mupoponyana um, on top so he took notice of that and he said you know who's this girl that is so into uh, writing and changing colors, writing in a diary because we were in a meeting. Uh, shortly after that, he um, called and called and called and we were using um, the old phones. I don't know if any of you can remember. I was using a 5110, Nokia 5110. And um, I would change faces. Sometimes it's yellow, sometimes it's blue, sometimes it's guava. Um, so I was that creative. So here's this guy that um, was pursuing me. And I remember the first thing I said to him when he told me that he is interested in me. I said, you will have to go and um, tell my dad. You will have to ask my dad for permission to date me. And that's exactly what he did. That Sunday, we went to our house, <laughs> my home, and I don't know where I disappeared to, but I left this guy with my father. And I don't know what, what, the, what was the conversation, but I know definitely there was some grilling there. But by the grace of God, you know, um, my dad allowed him to date me, uh, which was great because I also liked him. Um, and from there on, we were in a relationship. Um, we had a great dating se uh, season. We would uh, go out like any other young couple. Um, I was still quite young at, at, at that um, stage of my life, but I was enjoying having someone that we were at the same level, especially spiritually. Uh, we became friends um, and we would do um, like driving lessons. So when we met, my dad was already giving me driving lessons. So he would just uh, polish them up. We got married a year and a half after dating. Um, and I was 20 when we got married. Um, when we got married, he already had a son from a previous relationship. So our decision was that we were going to wait uh, before we could have our own children uh, so that we can give him um, the time to, you know, uh, we blend the family well. But also because we were a young couple, both of us were still studying, um, he was working, we wanted to enjoy the honeymoon phase, we wanted to travel the world, we wanted all things that um, young couples um, desire to have but mostly acquiring assets before we put responsibility on ourselves, making sure that we were financially stable. 
Um, so we decided that we were going to hold off um, trying to fall pregnant and that's exactly what we did. Um, the first four years of our marriage um, I was on contraceptives and everything was fine. Um, I did not have anything that um, would tell me that there might be a problem with my reproductive system. Um, I was having regular periods, everything was fine. Um, up until we stopped using contraceptives um, towards the beginning or mid fourth year. Um, and we waited, we waited, we started getting excited that oh, we might fall pregnant at any time now. Um, obviously you start telling family that hey, we are trying now. Uh, so a little Zwani will be coming along the way at some point. Um, but unfortunately it didn't work out that way. Um, at year number five, we consulted a local gynecologist and they did a laparoscopy on me, which is a procedure where they put a camera inside you to check if uh, your tubes are clear and um, there's no issues that they can pick up. And everything came back normal. Um, I do not remember any feedback that we got from that procedure that um, it was negative in any way. Um, doctor told us to relax. Um, well, that's exactly what we tried to do, but obviously with the stress that comes with wanting a baby so bad, we ended up stressing even more. Um, we went on, um, tried to relax, and we waited for another year. So year number uh, five going on six, this is where now the um, pain of infertility was starting to creep in um, on both of us. Uh, friends were getting pregnant um, and it was just difficult for us to comprehend the fact that we, we are unable to fall pregnant uh, naturally. When we realized that we were not falling pregnant um, at that time, we decided to consult a fertility specialist and both my husband and I were checked. So when you go to a fertility specialist, they check both the male and the female because um, it takes two to tango. Um, two people uh, reproduce, so it's not only a female factor. And when the fertility specialist came back with the report, he told us that my husband had a male factor fertility challenge. So the morphology of his sperm was not um, normal, meaning the shape of his sperm, the speed, um, and he had a low sperm count. Now this was a shock to us because this is a person that had a child already uh, from a previous relationship. And we had always thought that I'm the one that uh, had the problem because I've never fallen pregnant before. So he was experiencing what we call secondary infertility. At that time, it was difficult for us to explain to family members, even friends, that the reason why we are not uh, conceiving was because um, we have a male factor fertility. So we just let people believe whatever they wanted to believe. Um, the option that doctor gave us was trying for what is called artificial insemination, where they take the sperm, they select the healthy sperm and they insert it in your uterus at a time when you are ovulating. We tried that twice and it didn't work. I remember the last cycle that we tried, it was on my birthday on the 20th of June. And I was so obsessed with knowing when I'm ovulating and if I do fall pregnant, when is it's going to be my estimated uh, date of delivery. And I remember telling the specialist that I know that um, if I fall pregnant today, um, I am going to give birth 
uh, on our anniversary, which is the 27th of March. And he looked at this um, cycle calendar that they use, and he said, you know, you are exactly right. Um, so that showed how desperate and invested we were in, in falling pregnant. It was quite difficult after we um, had unsuccessful um, artificial inseminations because we sort of hoped that if it doesn't come naturally, then um, hopefully the doctors will take care of whatever problem that we have. My husband was put on some vitamins and medication to improve the quality of his sperm. And we stopped going to fertility um, for fertility treatments or seeing a fertility specialist. From there on, we, we just fell into depression. I think the reality of us not having our own children was beginning to set in and it found us a, in a very uh, vulnerable place. I remember one time when it was Mother's Day. So we went to church and all the mothers were asked to stand. And here I was sitting um, and mothers are being appreciated. And I am a married woman, almost married now, going for year number six. And there is nothing, there's no child. Um, there's comments from church, older church women asking, hey, can you do And at that moment, I sat there and I felt so alone. I felt like because I felt like everyone could see that I am barren. Um, all the mothers were given flowers and I remember there was this one particular old man that came to me and um, he was an usher and um, he pulled his hand out and said um, and from today on don't ever sit down when mothers are asked to stand because you are a mother. That gave me so much encouragement um, because I was in a very dark place that I could not communicate to anyone. Um, in my family, I don't remember us talking about fertility issues, miscarriages, either with my mother or grandmothers or aunts. So it was a new um, thing that was happening to me altogether. There wasn't people that we could go to and talk to about what was happening to us. So as we went into um, depression, both of us, my husband always says when he's talking, whenever he would go to the mall, he'd see pregnant women and that would trigger him so much. Um, we went for therapy and one of the therapy sessions, um, the psychologist asked one question and she said, why are you guys living your life based on something that might never happen. Why are you holding on from enjoying life, uh, waiting for something that might never happen? Um, and that was the aha moment for us, where we realized that what happens when kids don't come? Are we going to um, be depressed all our lives <laughs> or we are going to pick up where we are and just deal with our current situation. Um, a couple of months um, I had um, an abnormal period and this abnormal period was taking long, um, it was brown and I went to the doctor I consulted and I said, no man, this period, there's something wrong with it. He took uh, blood tests and they came back positive. So meaning um, my HCG hormone was, uh, was high, um, meaning that um, I was pregnant. But when he checked through the sauna, he didn't see anything, meaning I had had a miscarriage. Um, 
at that moment I was I had mixed feelings and number one I was excited at the fact that now I could fall pregnant naturally number two I was sad that I had lost the pregnancy I thought maybe there's something that I did something that I ate that I wasn't supposed to do so that is why I had the miscarriage um, about three months later the same thing happened again um, my HCG hormone came back positive but there was nothing and at that moment that week we were we were fasting and praying at church and we had um, people come into our house that week we were specifically praying for children so it was going to be such an amazing testimony that hey we were fasting and praying praying for children and now Karabo is pregnant she finds out on a Friday that she's pregnant it was going to be the perfect testimony that you would share uh, in church when I got the news that I had had yet another miscarriage I was so distraught I I just burst out in tears I couldn't even put back all my clothes I just put my bra in my bag and I drove home we were driving in different cars my husband and I so I had to drive myself home and on my way home I was just sobbing because um, I felt like God did not hear my prayers um, Nati, I'm here to suffer. Why are other women uh, falling pregnant? Teenagers are falling pregnant. Lord, here am I. I thought we did everything according to your will, the way you would want us to live our lives as young people, as a young married couple. Um, I, I thought I gave it my all, but I wasn't reaping what I was sowing. Um, and that whole weekend, I stayed indoors and I cried myself to sleep. Um, my mother came to see me and all she could do was just hug me and hold me. Um, the most difficult thing um, during this time was that I am married uh, to a Zulu man from Pongola and my father-in-law was a polygamist um, so you can imagine we've got a fertility challenge which is at that stage necessarily not a female factor fertility um, but I was still seen as the problem so first of all it was suggested um, by an elder in the family, Gutifane Lenghamji, um, Another one was Nlanyiswe, Gutolwe, Umakoto Munyo Zuzala, Mwaba Lona Gazali. And that was a pain um, in my heart, but I thank God for my husband as a principled man because he stood by his vows that we will be together no matter whether we've got children or not. Um, we had the one child that we wanted to focus on and, and love. The one incident that I would like to share that um, I will never forget was during a funeral at home uh, in KZN. So, Ekaya Awazi Ugbiza Umienwa Kuneka Malake like la ekoli sibabiza bo baby ya bo hani ya bo sweetheart so ekhaya awukwazi ukuthi em ncela uthu love angnikeze whatever or so i i said to one of the cousins ncela uncelele kubaba kasibanibani ukuthi angifakele le nto emutweni and this auntie sitting next to me says Awazi ugumbiza ngugutuba ubaba gasban bani because loyom to anaksinga nyako. So fanelu zalu wako 
uzombiza ngeka malumtwana wakho uh, and then she concluded by saying akzalelwana you know that night as we were sitting there in the rendezvous i cried so much i said lord if you've got eyes open your eyes and see if you've got ears open your ears and hear the shame the ridicule that i am in right now um as your child how can i be so ashamed among people of foreign nations i said this is not my home and i'm not feeling loved right now but i have to stay here and that was one of the most painful things i remember about what we were going through fast forward um at some point after we had therapy we decided we made a conscious decision that we are going to stop trying we had already had uh, tried two artificial inseminations and we had lost two pregnancies and we said whatever it is we are going to stop we are not going to um go on with trying anymore it's not going to be something that we deliberately do um soon after that we sold shares that we had um bought for planning for the coming of this baby or these children we had names for them um we had a plan on how we wanted them to grow we so badly wanted to be parents but at that moment we decided and we said no we're not going to do this anymore and for anyone that has a dream um you know letting go of a dream is is grief you go through grief it's like you lost someone you lost something dear to you we sold shares that we bought um and we spent the money we went on holiday <laughs> i did a couple of renovations in the house and then i decided that no i am going to go back to school to do my post grad um and that's exactly what i did i registered the next year which was 2011 i registered um everything was going well okay. two months in my study mate had chicken pox so because we were uh, working in close proximity i also contracted chicken pox um it was after the easter friday that i realized oh, new man as i was passing i've got i've got bumps and i remember that my study mate had chicken pox and i say i swear this is chicken pox i slept that day and the next day in the morning 6:30 in the morning i was at the casualty um in one of the local hospitals and i said please doctor whatever you do please give me something that the chicken pox doesn't go on my face because i i can't have those permanent spots on my face and he said um i need to take a pregnancy test before i give you anything i said doctor we've been trying for years i've had miscarriages we tried artificial insemination it did not work just give me the jab and let me leave and he refused he called the pathology department to come and take blood and i left i was so upset with him um when i got home i self medicated and i slept um used the old way calamine and everything else sort of put calamine all over my face so that at least it doesn't they don't come on my face um 
they called me to say your results are ready and I refused to go fetch them. Why would I go fetch results of a negative pregnancy test? I've had this a million times before. So my husband went and collected the results and when he came back home, he said, I've got news for you. And I said, okay, what is going on? And he said, we are pregnant. And he showed me the paper and and when he did, we were already past the stage where we used to have miscarriages. Both of us were in disbelief. Like, we stood in the kitchen and we were like, this is not real. It can't be happening. But fear also crept in because of the pregnancy losses that we've had in the past. We didn't want to go out and announce to people that, hey, we are pregnant. And then we come back again, ah, we had a miscarriage. So we kept quiet. We didn't tell anyone. So we found out on the 23rd of April 2011 that we were pregnant. I didn't go to see any doctor to consult. I get it, they say whenever you find out you must consult ASAP and I didn't do that. I just said, I'm not going to bother myself with this, I'm not going to stress. If it's, it's there, if it goes, it's still fine. I'm not going to invest my emotions in it. But um, on the 23rd of May, we went to see the gynecologist that um, we saw the last time we went. And um, this was the day when we heard the heartbeat. I was eight weeks pregnant at that time. It was the most beautiful thing I have ever experienced in my whole life. It was a moment where I knew that God is alive, but also God hears prayers. He listens to his children and answers at his right time. Um, doctor then um, gave me reports of the previous um, miscarriages that were that I was having, the reasons why I was having. Um, recurring early pregnancy losses and I was diagnosed with an autoimmune disease uh, called antiphospholipid syndrome which is a syndrome that um, creates antibodies your body creates antibodies when you fall pregnant and um, thinks maybe there's a virus or something and then starts attacking uh, the pregnancy so because of the chicken pox, I'm thinking the body maybe didn't know what to fight. And by the grace of God, um, we fell pregnant. Doctor told us that the baby could have deformities because of um, having chicken pox at, um, in first trimester, which is dangerous. Um, on the 1st of January, 2012, Ndumiso Musawa Kezwane was born. Healthy, weighing 3.25 kgs, and we were parents to a baby boy. That is our story of infertility. And it is a miracle because I started 2012 on a new note. I started 2012 with a new role of being a mother. Shortly after Ndumiso um, was born, we quickly decided that we don't want to wait for too long before we could try for another one. Um, and we did try. I was never on contraceptives ever since we stopped um, when we were trying. Um, but unfortunately, I fell pregnant, but had an ectopic pregnancy. So an ectopic pregnancy is when a uh, pregnancy um, uh, inseminates or no, um, 
sit in your um, your fallopian tubes. So they had to remove the tube, unfortunately. So now I had half the chances of falling pregnant now. We later got to go through two more miscarriages, early uh, miscarriages. The latest one was uh, February 2020. Out of this journey, my husband and I decided to start a non-profitable organization called Hannah You Are Not Alone. Hannah, you are not alone, seeks to offer support to couples that are going through infertility, that they are not alone, and we offer them um, counseling, we offer advice um, on which fertility clinics to go to. We have held uh, breakfast symposiums in the past where we invite fertility specialists to come and talk about different causes of infertility to educate people about infertility because we have realized that a lot of people's fertility challenges can be resolved if they get the right help at the right time. So that is what Hannah You Are Not Alone does. We are on all social media platforms. Um, Hannah You Are Not Alone. Instagram Hannah underscore You Are Not Alone. And on TikTok, you will find us under Garabozwani, Infertility Warrior. Thank you, and that is my story. My name is Garabozwani, and I have been through the most. <laughs>